everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from Salt Lake City, Utah, it's Thank God I'm Atheist, the podcast. I'm Frank. And I'm Dan. Coming up on today's show, on the second half, we're going to be talking about atheists and civility. Yeah. We're, we're going to be, well, we will ask <laughs> the question, uh, should, should we be civil? Civil. Or, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe we- I, I think this has been a common theme through the show, through our show, through our show, civility. I well, th- no, I mean, the, the, we, this topic <laughs> of like, of, uh, how to handle, yeah, discourse surrounding belief and non belief right. and whatnot. We, we've talked about it a lot, but I don't, it's a how question. Many, how many times have we actually really like delved, delved into it? We're so delving, that's what we're gonna be doing. We will be delving, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like a submarine. We're just gonna delve, dive, delve, delve, <laughs> delve. Make your depth three hundred uh, yards. Hey Dan, yo, did you draw a picture of Muhammad this week? I I didn't. Oh. Uh, only because I don't care, <laughs> and I didn't pay attention. <laughs> Was it because you were being civil? I'm so civil. No, I'm gonna draw one right now. Uh, Dan, no, well, yeah, I'm just gonna draw. No, it you're quick. gonna have a jihad declared against us. If it hasn't happened by now, <laughs> we're flying plenty under the radar. It's okay. okay. Here, here's a picture. Frankly, because you, we don't... Can you hear the... Can you hear the... Somebody pointed out that we don't know what uh, Muhammad looked like, so any picture that you draw of a person... Yeah. Could be a picture of well, Muhammad. And why does he even have to be take human form? Maybe Muhammad Ooh. likes to take acorn f- form or... Uh, or tree form. My Muhammad looks... All you have to do is draw a picture of a tree and put Muhammad with an arrow. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. It's like... My Muhammad, my Muhammad looks a little bit like Ernie from uh, Sesame Street. <laughs> He's smiling. Aww. He's got curly hair. He looks like a gay puppet. Yeah. He does look like a gay puppet. <laughs> there. I just drew him. Anyway, yes, you, you, you wanted to talk about Draw Muhammad Day? No, not at all, actually. Oh, okay. Um, well, what do you, you want to you talk took the about? Bait, and now you'll have a jihad declared against you. Yeah. See what I just did there? Come at me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what you got? Oh, you've got guns? Okay, don't oh, come at me, please. Shit. Please don't what, come at me. What have you done, Dan? <laughs> um, well, speaking about Islam, uh huh. might as well just get right into this one. Get your jihad going? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, did you hear this one, Dan, about Saudi Arabia? They... Uh, they took out an ad, I guess kind of a classified ad in like the help the, wanted section. The country took out an ad? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if it was like in the classifieds or anything, but they are advertising at the moment for eight new executioners. Oh. Um, because they're having an increase in their number of death sentences and they're backlogged. Oh my God. So. <laughs> oh, it's like Texas. They need they they need to team up with Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, then uh, then they can all work through things together. Doesn't Halliburton have an execution division? <laughs> they should. <laughs> they should. I'm just gonna go out on a limb here, Frank. I'm gonna guess that they're not looking for people with uh, experience injecting. No, uh, specifically, uh, as is typically the case in Saudi Arabia, death sentences carried out by public beheading. Aha, uh-huh. uh, see? So yeah. um, the, the, the main job uh, requirement uh, or responsibility, I guess, uh, would be, execute, quote, executing a judgment of death. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, it is a civil service position. Okay, yeah. Uh, not... The best on pay. It's in sort of the lower echelons of pay. Do you get good benefits? I mean, that's... It's a civil servant oh. job. It's probably great. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I would think you'd get full medical and dental. Absolutely. Great <laughs> retirement. Right. Absolutely great retirement. Um, fortunately, just in case uh, you're somebody who tires of sort of the monotony of any kind of, you know, you know, maybe you're just tired. Like, you're the kind of person who wouldn't survive well at a desk job. Sure. It's the same thing over and over and over, right? Um, they also, um, it's not all just, uh, beheadings. Uh, it's also, uh, uh amputations. Oh, it's common. Oh, cutting uh, off of hands. Yeah. For theft. Sure. And what have you. Sure. Uh, lesser offenses often will have that. What, what, uh, being, what, 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 the what I, one wants to believe that they're civilized enough. They're doing this with swords though, aren't they? Is that what's happening? 
I would think machetes. Yeah, something of the sort. I think I, I'm. I read something so at one point about someone getting beheaded yeah, by sword. One of those big sort of Arab sword things, big right? Saber of some yeah, sort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, you, you know oh. what? Honestly, they need to come into uh, the 20th century because that was the last time <laughs> the, the French had uh, the French did it. But they don't need swords. There are guillotines. They uh, guillotines. There is a certain spectacle to to the guillotine. There's no spectacle different. to a sword beheading. No, no, no. That is very different oh, yeah, than okay. the kind of spectacle that you get from a sword. Yeah, um, it's less personal. It's I'll give less you that. Personal. It's... You know, it's very clinical. <laughs> it's also um, smacks of uh, imperialism. Yeah, just a little. It's a reminder Wait, of when the French were. Does, does just Saudi Arabia running, shy running. away from imperialism? <laughs> when did but that start they happening? Were just like, <laughs> <laughs> Clearly not French imperialism, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I just think, I just think, you know, you, one guillotine could do the work of eight swordsmen. I mean, you could just keep, some sort of mechanized. You could just keep running people through that yeah. thing. Yeah, no, yeah, you're you're right. Again, a place where Texas could help. You just Something. go to one of their slaughterhouses yeah. and just see what those look like. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah they probably yeah. don't behead. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I like mean, streamline this. Yeah, this thing. I, I think you're right. The 21st century with 21st century technology, you could make a guillotine that didn't have all the problems of the original guillotine. Yeah. All the wood on wood action and yeah, the yeah, gumming yeah. up of the works and right. whatnot. Hell, you could yeah. you could have it you could have it automated such that the head goes down into the the you know the head collection place and the yeah. body rolls off into the body collection Absolutely. thing and you, i mean everything could be very very mechanized yeah you could have a whole you could have a just a a conveyor belt yeah. of, of beheadings well, they just they should use that pneumatic thing that they do in slaughterhouses the, 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 the piston thing the thing that old no country for old men you, you're taking you're uh, saying that they should take the anton chigurh route yeah yeah <laughs> that's way better yeah absolutely uh, I, I feel like I feel like we've taught Saudi Arabia a good lesson here. Um, I do want to say this. Uh-huh. Uh, I do have one correction. Oh. I just skimmed across it. Uh, it was not placed. This ad was not placed in a newspaper, but it was on the civil service jobs portal. Oh, okay, on, yeah, on, on the web. That's uh, more legit to me. Yeah, that's yeah. that's good. It's good to know that. <laughs> I, I kind God. I want to meet some of the people who have applied to this. First of all, where do you get experience for it? I, I mean, it's all on the job. I don't. You yeah, have to do it on the I, job. I don't think that there's any uh, experience required. Yeah, to be honest, you just got to have like be a little bit like cuckoo nut balls in the in the head, and then uh, you're ready to go. It would be a very interesting job interview. Yeah, as the interviewer. <laughs> yeah, because your job is like to find a psychotic to find the being. person who's crazy enough, mm. but not too crazy. Yeah. Don't take your work home with you. No, don't don't no, don't no. you start getting a big head just because uh, just because you're one of the official yeah. to be honest, chopper offers. It might be really cathartic. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you just you know your neighbor comes over and is like he's screaming at you about the state of your lawn or whatever, and you just look him right in the eye and you say, "Do you know what I do for a living?" No, 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 no. You just you just put that in the drawer. Oh. <laughs> just, just save that for later. Oh, you're a better psychotic than I am. Yeah, it's yeah, true. Yeah, you file that away, uh-huh. and the next time you need to, like, you know, there's an execution. Mm-hmm. There are, uh, there so far have been ninety some odd executions just this year. Oh, oh, wow. Uh, which uh, I'm sorry, that was incorrect. Eighty five mm. executions so far uh, as of Sunday. As long as this article, yes, this article is up to date. Um, and that's compared to 88 in the whole year of 2014. Oh, so they're really picking up steam. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that that's yeah, they are picking up steam. The reason for that is, um, like I said, there had been a little bit of a judicial backlog. Um, actually, I didn't say that. Um, <laughs> and uh, they've gotten a lot more judges appointed. Mm. Uh, so now they're they're able to like work through this. The appeals because they're, they're, you know it's, it's a civilized country that sure. we're talking about here, and so they do have, um, you know, appeals an appeals process <laughs> and whatnot. Yeah, I you know, and just as a basis for comparison, I decided to just Google right now uh, what the state, what Texas is, uh scheduled executions, what their execution oh, schedule God. looks like. Yeah, they've only got f- 
five until next October. Yeah. Between now and October, they've only got five. Yeah. Well, um, so I will say this. Saudi's really doing a better job. Than I mean, you Texas. brought it up. Uh-huh. Um, apparently, they ranked number three last year for numbers of executions behind China and Iran. Okay. And ahead of Iraq and the United States. We're in the top five, though. We are in the top five. Good, 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 good. Uh, China, like they just seem to be doing, though, they are outdoing us. Mm. Uh, They're in the number one spot. Um, They're cheating. They have more people. (laughs) It's cheating. (laughs) (laughs) They've got, like, way more people. They've got three times the people, that more than three times the people that we've got. But good company that we're in there. Yeah, absolutely. Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia. It's really a figure to be proud of. Uh, To to know that we are... (laughs) We're, we're number five. We're, we're swimming with the big dogs. <laughs> or number three. Yeah, I, I just mixed my metaphor there. And let, swimming I mean, with I dogs. guess I guess dogs swim. Yeah, I feel like maybe that's correct. Maybe we're swimming with the big dogs. I'm not sure. Sure. What that means. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to move on. Um, so let's just imagine, Frank, that someone has asked you to marry them. Not not they they haven't proposed to you, but they are getting married to their future spouse. <laughs> yeah, and when, when could that possibly ever happen? No, again? that that could happen. Is that what you're saying? I, I, <laughs> you're perfectly marriageable, Franklin. Uh, but uh, let but for this case, let's say that two of your friends are getting married to each other, and they want you to officiate the ceremony. Okay. Um, what would you, as as you understand the law, would you be able to do that? Um. Well, there's a couple hoops I'd have to jump through, but yes. What are those hoops? Uh, there's this little online churchy thing, and you can become a minister of it by paying a small fee. Then right. you get a certificate, and you take that down to whatever your marriage licensing agency is, whether it's your city or county or right. state, however it works where you live. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then you, you get... Yeah. That Does it thing. strike you as bullshit that you would have to like essentially pretend to join a church in order to do uh in order to do this thing? Um yes, I guess so. Yeah, now it, that you bring it up, yeah, that's that's probably a problem. It has struck thing. others as bullshit too. And now uh the Center for Inquiry la- so last year the Center of, uh, for Inqu- Inquiry uh won a lawsuit against the state of Indiana. Uh, giving non-religious people who were secular celebrants uh, the ability to officiate weddings. Oh, fantastic. Um, I just read that statement exactly as Hammond Meta wrote it. I'm just going to point that <laughs> wow. out. Like, I was trying to reword it in my head, and I was just like, no, he wrote it right. I'll just, uh, I'll just directly read off of his thing. Well, I'm glad you uh, <laughs> gave him credit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, apparent, so apparently that happened uh, in Indiana. Now it has happened again. In Minnesota. What? Uh, or they tried to do the same thing. They filed a lawsuit against Washington County officials because uh, because they, and th- yeah, because they uh, wanted to marry someone. Yes. And they were not a- allowed to. Rude. So, um, so, yeah, I mean, that's progressing. I just think that that's a very interesting thing. Uh, uh, point which i hadn't it hadn't really even occurred to me until i started to read this that yeah it's kind of bullshit it is kind of bullshit like it's an easy hoop for you to jump through it's easy to get credentialed as uh as a minister well and it's clearly a bullshit church right and so i guess that's why my bullshit meter for my for my own purposes right i've never officiated a wedding or gone through the jump through those hoops or anything but like like just thinking it through right Knowing that it's a bullshit church, I just, I, I guess, yeah, I hadn't thought about it. Well, and it's but not just at, them. But, but what's great about this is, yeah, why do they get to do all the marrying? Mm-hmm. I mean, we're, all we're doing is just buying into this this um, um, prejudice in the system right? that, oh, well, religious leaders just, boop, just right. get to marry people. Right. Mormon, Whereas if you Mormon want to be bishops, a justice of the peace, there's... You know, right. Mormon, bi- Mormon bishops are just lay people who happen to be called on to become a bishop. Yeah. It's not like they went through any special training. Yeah. They didn't do anything special. They yeah. didn't study to be a bishop. They just were picked. That's a bullshit church, too. Right. 
and a bullshit job. Right. So, well, and, it, and you know, Hammond actually points out that uh, you can also be credentialed by the Church of the Latter-day Dude, a religion of the Big Lebowski, or the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. But they're all still buying into that right um what would you call it what's the right word that uh it's a, it's a bias bias it, religious bias yeah it's a, it's a it's a it's the, the structures of that whole what, what, what's uh, yeah anyway yeah, yeah. It, i mean you're still basically saying oh i get that it needs to be a church yeah but bullshit churches count too right as opposed Which, to saying you know why does it have to be a church yeah why is that important yeah I mean, bullshit church is subversive on its own level. Yes, There's no absolutely. doubt about that. Absolutely. Um, As a matter but, of fact, I've thought about uh, the, the the Universal Life Church is the one that you were, I think, talking about. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. And you can get, yes, you can, you can, you can pay a little bit of money and uh, be licensed as a minister for, through them. You can also get uh, your doctor of theology through them. <laughs> How much does that cost? I don't know. I think it's like 50 bucks or something like that. Do you have to take any classes? You have to no. F- write a thesis? No. Defend your... Here's the thing. <laughs> it's every bit as accredited as almost every other doctor of, of theology. You know what I mean? Like, like there are all wow. of these Christian universities out there that aren't accredited that offer you a doctor of theology. Might as well get one and not have to do any work for it. Yeah, that's true. So you get a little P PhD you can put behind your, yeah, your name? yeah. They put it. They put a. a, a they, I think they mail you out a certificate. Frame that bad boy is up. It, is it a PhD or is it something else? Is well, a doctor of religion something? I think it's a doctor of the. I don't know what it is. I mean, pff, hell, they probably put whatever you want on there. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell us the, the three letters that you would like after your name, and where do we put the period? Yeah, exactly. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. You now have those letters after your name. Yeah, I love it because yeah, you can get a doctorate of theology. I like I typed in doctor of theology and there's liberty.edu. That's bullshit. And uh GCU, I don't know what that stands for. That's bullshit. Too. Dot .edu. Yeah. Uh Regent University. I just like the idea that like <laughs> Oh, oh, I think it's a THD. Oh. Less impressive. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Those are not the coveted three letters. No. Although, you know, mm. it's interesting. Uh, there are legitimate schools that offer this. Yeah. So, like Duke, you could get a THD. Shut up. From them. Wow. I imagine a lot of legitimate schools. I just like the idea. Or there's also Fuller offers a PhD in theology Ooh. as opposed to a THD. Yeah. That's the good one. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the you one. You can do want. a lot with that one. There's really places you can go. It looks like BYU one. offers that too. Anyway, uh, go go out and get yourself a free or not a free, but a uh, <laughs> a, a, a non worked for doctorate if you guys want to. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, I uh, the the story that I want to go to um, is uh, one of those that I think needs to be just brought up, mm-hmm. and the the reason I feel like. I need to bring it up is because it's just something horrifying that's oh, happening goody. in the world. Yes. Hooray. I, yeah, yeah. So with that said, um, Indonesia's military, uh, like I'm sure probably probably all the militaries in the world, have a, uh, um, a medical examination as part of their uh, entrance uh, requirements, right? Mm. So a new recruit is required to go through, um, uh, you know, some sort of physical examination and probably is some kind of psychological examination. As sure. Well. Uh, and, uh, well, the women who are joining, uh, the Indonesian military are required to strip naked and have their genitalia manually examined by a doctor, uh, in order to ensure that they are virgins. Wow. Um, this is, um, they are specifically doing hymen examinations, of course. And right. If you're looking for virginity, that's where old men would go. <laughs> uh, and, uh, of course, that's a terrible 
<laughs> so, yeah, uh, <laughs> metric to use to figure out if somebody's actually a virgin or not. Well, I mean, much it, less, it, uh, not even not even addressing the issue of why the fuck do you need to know whether they're a virgin? <laughs> right, right, um, right. You're you're starting with, hey, that doesn't real. Yeah. I mean, it says you're, you're training this person to be a killing machine, and right. you're worried about whether or not she is a virgin. Right. If she's stuck to blowies, it's okay. <laughs> If she's if she's kept it oral, then everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, you don't yeah. want you don't want if that hymen's ruptured. Yeah, how and how are you gonna kill somebody with with a with a non intact hymen? How are you gonna do it? It's impossible. It's really really difficult. <laughs> of course, they're doing this because they are concerned about having the best people in their military, quote both physically and mentally. Um and uh, oh, then surely, surely they're also uh, checking the men for virginity. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Of course they are. They're looking for their hymens too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. No, you're right. You're clearly there's a double standard here. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Who would have thought that? The um, Human Rights Watch. Um, I don't know if I want to, how far I want to go down this road. Um, they, uh, they call it a quote. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, the, the two finger test, mm-hmm. um, which, uh, the, the women who have gone through this, um, are, um, saying you know talking about how painful the examination is mm. humiliating the examination is of course no um and uh there are actually people who are comparing this to a uh, they're using the word torture mm. uh, to describe what these uh inductees are going through with this examination uh they this examination apparently can cause uh Beyond the physical pain, it can lead to damage to the hymen, um, which is ironic. Oh, it looks like your uh, hymen's intact. Oh, there it goes. No, uh, I guess you can't go into the army. Sorry. <laughs> well, no. Okay. I will that was ba- my fault, but you can't go in. I will back up that uh, if the doctor finds that the woman's hymen is not intact, um, he immediately questions her. Mm. And if he buys her explanation, such as there was some kind of injury or whatever. I had a bicycle accident. Exactly. Um, he may let her through. Okay. But if, it's she's, a, it's if, at if his she discretion. says, if she says, no, I had sex. Well, then, obviously you can't, you can't be in the military if you've ever had sex. No. That clearly. would be ridiculous. Uh, but there have been infection, just continuing down what I was just talking about. Uh, it's, uh, this examination has led to bleeding and infection. Uh, and of course the psychologically, the pain, um, is, uh, is quite acute. Mm. Uh, so, um, I just kind of wanted to, to, this is one of those just horrible stories that I just, it just sounds to me like they don't want women. No, well, there's a picture up here of all the recruits and there's a shit ton of women. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, I don't think this is about keeping them out. This is about, a patriarchal, right? Of course, a, it is. A, 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 you know, um, it's it's, it, a, it's about this vision of what a good woman is. Yeah, exactly. This, this this sort of bullshit vision of of what it means to be an okay human with a vagina. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. You're unacceptable. I would. Reje- we. Oh no, nope, we reject you. You've had sex. Yeah, you're not allowed to defend this country. Right. You're not good enough. Or kill for it. Because you've had sex. Yeah, some you, that's some, the, one of the weirdest things. Like you want some sex crazed. Ma- <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't even finish. The Someone thought. in a blind sexual frenzy. <laughs> yeah, out on the battlefield, armed to the teeth and <laughs> blood pumping to the nethers. Yeah, yeah. Why not? That's what you're looking for. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> And you don't want all these virgins distracting the the, the male recruits. What, what you, you, what you, you don't want, want is virgin, virgins who are who are distracted themselves. Yeah, I mean, well, you think true, about. Yeah. I mean, you, you think about them going into the battlefield with all those 
people all around. And, and, yeah. Anyway, I, I think we've strayed from the point. Just there, yeah, we've strayed from logic and reason <laughs> and all sorts of things. We've strayed. We've, str- we've strayed. I'm gonna I'm gonna whip us around and and, oh, and okay, pivot, and, Dan. Pivot. I'm gonna take a quick left and uh, go on to a different uh, story. <laughs> See, this is, I, I just want to back up to something. <laughs> oh, this shit. is the risk that we run on this show <laughs> of bringing up something that's serious because for some reason we just can't get through it without without making finding a joke? something about it to make well, light. It's kind humor podcast so <laughs> i'm okay with that but we should be allowed serious <laughs> moments to talk about absolutely the plight of women right you know uh in 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 to developing be, nations to be clear we are against this policy <laughs> that's the the official tgia position is that we we think this is bad <laughs> Uh, this yes, yes all right i'm moving on thank you dan um for that clarification so uh I, there's an interesting thing it was posted a few times in the uh, members only lounge so mm. thank you you guys yeah um a, a washington post article that's discussing a uh so there was a massive Pew uh, survey there's been a couple of Pew surveys that have come out yeah uh, notably sort of Projection. There's also been projections by Pew that that you know religiousness is going down in the U.S. but it's going up in general in the in the world and and that we, yeah, that okay. um, Islam's going to overtake Christianity and all kinds of Terr- dogs and cats ter- ter- living ter- together. Yeah. Terrifying. Mass hysteria. Terrifying. Uh, here, but somebody has crunched the numbers in a really interesting way. They're, so so some other they've taken numbers from some other Pew, Pew polls. Uh, and they've they've sort of correlated religiosity with uh, climate change support <laughs> and uh, support of evolution. Okay, it's very interesting. It's basically completely correlated. Uh, if you uh, if you're in a certain category, you do not support environmental regulations and you do not support evolution yeah. as a concept. Okay, and. But those two things, it basically makes a nice straight line on the graph. Yeah, but can't you? I mean, I didn't take statistics because I got a degree in the arts, uh-huh. specifically so I didn't have to take statistics. statistics. <laughs> um, but can't you make any two sets of numbers correlate if you just, like, limit the ranges in the right way? And Well, this is just about what religions, uh, what people in certain religions uh how they feel about these two options okay all right uh what's interesting is there there is one notable outlier and that is the jehovah's witnesses who oh. are strongly anti-evolution and strongly supportive of environmental regulations they are yes that yeah they would be a little an outlier with that yeah it's that and that's really interesting of course at the at the sort of tip top of the chart uh, you have atheists, agnostics, New Age people, conser- Jewish people, uh, Quakers, the uh-huh. Religious Society of Friends, right? Uh, all supporting uh, environmental regulations very highly and supporting the notion of evolution very highly. There's okay. no surprise there. Right, right, right. right. Okay. Buddhists also are in there. Uh, and something that they've called liberal traditions, whatever that means. That sounds like a weird college course. <laughs> it does. It does. Taught by like some hippie or an AP class, liberal <laughs> tradition. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, as you work your way sort of down uh, away from supporting these two things, you know you get still very much in support. You've got Hindu uh, uh, nothing in particular <laughs> is 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 very much in support. Anglican, Presbyterian. Uh, uh-huh. As you go a little bit down, when you, you know you, now you're getting closer to not to like not having an opinion on it at all. Yeah, uh, you got uh, Orthodox and Catholics, mm. um, and it just says Orthodox. I'm going to assume that that's Orthodox Christianity, like Eastern Orthodox. Yeah, as opposed to Orthodox Judaism or whatever, or maybe just anyone who's Orthodox about anything. Oh, there's Jewish or- Orthodox over here, so yeah, yeah, that's just Orthodox Christianity, but they're very strange about that. Um, Hmm. and then of course, like as you go down, 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 down to not supporting anything, then you've got, then you've got your, uh, your assemblies of God, Pentecostals, 
LDS and Mormon. <gasps> All the way down with, with the Pentecostals, with the Pentecostals and the oh, uh, yeah, those pe- they keep Seventh Day Adventists, they really do. yeah, the Baptists. Ugh, Jesus Christ! Uh, it's a very interesting and totally correlated uh, graph. Wow, uh, it's 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 pretty fascinating, huh? Uh, and and strange because these are not religious questions, right? But they are. But it's it's. You know the world view, mm-hmm. that, you know that's yeah that's promoted by a set of beliefs. Yeah, there was I, I read a quote I think on the members only lounge as well uh, by Ray Comfort, a okay. famous Christian evangelical guy. Yeah, who basically said that it it's hard for atheists to see a tree cut down because they have because the earth is the only home they have and they have to worry about it, but we Christians know. The, the earth is a, just a temporary place for us to be. So why the fuck should we care about it? Cut down the trees. Yeah. We know that God will restore everything to the way it needs to be if he has to. He, you know, <laughs> it's his planet. It's, He'll fix it up. It's a fascinating take on environmentalism mm. to we, say, I just don't need to care at all. Yeah. Uh, what about that uh, command to, uh, to what what is it, something about... Being good shepherds, being good stewards, good and stewards. That's the word of I'm the earth. For, of the earth. Now yeah. he's not. He now he doesn't give a fuck. Stewards. About that. Yeah, you he's you being have to a, take care of it. You have to. No, no. He nourish just, it. He's stewarding it. the felling of that tree. I'm just going to steward uh, all these animals into their death. Good for him. Yeah, yeah that's he's, where he's, he's got, at. He's got it figured out, doesn't he? <laughs> he definitely. He's got it. Hey, it's an easier life. Yeah. When, you, when you don't have to think about any of that stuff, that's to, an easier life. Well, there's a lot less sorting mm. that happens in your life. You you don't have to, you know, take your plastics and put them in a different bin. Oh, yeah. Take your glass, put it in that bin that only gets collected every couple weeks and not every week. Yeah. And, yeah. No, you don't have just, to worry about any of that really stuff. It's really complicated. You yeah. just, uh, yeah, literally. You, mm-hmm. you can just throw everything away and... <laughs> oh. So great. (laughs) There's one giant bin, like the good old days. Like the good old days. You know. Or fuck the bin, just throw it into the woods. Just burn it. Do whatever you want. Just get a big, you know, 50-gallon drum, put all your trash in it. We actually used to do this. Um, Put all your trash in it. Sure. Pour some diesel over it. Yeah, just a little bit of of diesel. We had no trash collection (laughs) in rural Oklahoma. There you go. So... And you got you got it's nothing but <laughs> open was, space. This it's, was a while ago. There were actually private trash collectors who would come around, but my parents were just like, "Eh, we'll just burn it." The last people who lived here, they had a, a drum in the back for burning stuff. Mm-hmm. Let's well, just burn stuff. That's the, what people do in the country. The burning drum. Do you know how fucking bad that is? Yeah, it's I not, can't even believe it. It's not. It's not environmentally it's, friendly. Oh, it stunk so bad. Too. Oh, I'll bet it was awful oh you got like the plastic and the rubber stuff yeah, in there these oh, were my northern californian suburbanite parents <laughs> right they're just Dragging trying to us assimilate out to Oklahoma. yeah okay yeah <laughs> all right there are better ways to assimilate what's next um well speaking of assimilation oh i'd like to talk about the boy scouts of america oh dear <laughs> They don't always assimilate nicely with no. others. No, they don't. Uh, in fact, it said that on their report card, I think. They, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they don't play well with others. Right, yes. Um, the um, the BSA, famous for their conservative uh, Christian God-believing values. Indeed. You can be Jewish. Okay. You just have to believe in God. Right. Right. Um they uh yeah, they're they're big on the Judeo Christian values. It's in it's in the Scout not motto. Is it the Scout oath? It's in the oath. Yeah, exactly. Uh and uh so they they, they they're God believers. Mm-hmm. They're also gay deniers. Oh yeah. Uh in the form of uh, at this point, after some revisions of their their policy in the past couple of years, they do not allow uh, gay leaders. Correct. They 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 will allow the gay boys, but they don't allow reluctantly. Gay, yeah, <laughs> they don't allow the gay leaders. Well, Robert Gates, you take off that pink neckerchief, Peter. <laughs> you can be in, but you can't wear pink. 
Well, guess what? What? Robert Gates, who is the current president of the Boy Scouts of America. Okay. Um, has called for an end to the group's ban on gay troop leaders. What? Uh, Robert Gates, you might recognize the name. Uh, He's the former Secretary of Defense. Oh. Uh, and uh, That Robert Gates? Uh-huh. They always get somebody like that to be president of the BSA. Oh. They find somebody who they think is conservative, and uh-huh. they bring him in. Although they knew who he was getting. This is the guy who said that, you know, don't ask, don't tell should end. Right. You know. Um, That's interesting. Yeah, right? Uh, he, he says, I must speak as plainly and blunt this he's addressing the uh and the, the their annual uh meeting uh-huh. Nash, big national annual meeting sure um he says i must speak as plainly and bluntly to you as i spoke to presidents when i was director of the cia and secretary of defense we must deal with the world as it is not as we might wish it to be okay the status quo in our movement's membership standards cannot be sustained and he's talking specifically about um 70 percent of local units uh like the troops right? sure um are sponsored by uh church groups sure or churches in general yeah um and what's what he's recognizing has, has, has happened is that not all the churches are actually against the gays right and so there he's like well how do we basically discriminate between these two right we, who's who's the right church and who's the wrong church yeah exactly well joseph smith has the answer for that well yes <laughs> a lot of different people have the answer for that <laughs> but and strangely their answers conflict they, with they each don't other agree it's, it's weird true. god has to all told all these different people anyway beside that's beside the point uh and so he's he's starting to say that in order to preserve religious freedom that they cherish um their church partners need to get on board mm. with changing this policy. Wow. They're, and and basically what he's saying also is that they can make an allowance that each unit gets to determine their own policy for their leadership. Oh, right? okay. So if it's a church group that uh, is LDS sponsored, sure, they don't have to uh, allow for gay men to be. Oh, thank God! The 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 in, in in the leadership role. I was so worried about those Mormons. <laughs> oh, my, oh, thank God! Yeah, now they have an, uh, yeah. But I mean, he's just he's just trying to figure out how to keep the yeah. BSA viable, and uh, because well, they actually have a couple of rogue uh, councils. Yeah, uh, there's one in particular that has it's allowing for. They're just they're just like just, fuck it. Yeah. We're just gonna no and when. Te- Technically, the national organization could pull their charter, but do they want to create the schism? Right, exactly. In, in the BSA, well, and, that would cause. And you and I have and even called on, on funding. As you, well, yeah, well, from. you and I have called for people to boycott this organization, and we're not the only ones. Like, no, there are yeah. plenty of people who are pulling their boys from the scouts yeah. because their boys are because they they don't want them associating with a, a bigoted yeah. uh, organization. Now, I will say this. If the BSA gets good on the gay issue, they're still not good on the atheist oh, issue. Oh, no. You and I can't. Yeah, exactly. There's, we so, still need to boycott them. They're still bigots. Right. But they're less bigoted. Wait, it, okay, so this is an interesting setup. Like, the the setup of them having – of them allowing some, some churches to – or some uh, ch- troops uh-huh. to have gay leaders and others to discriminate. Yeah. We'll just further make those discriminating. Uh, it'll separate them out. Yeah. And as gay gay tolerance and gay acceptance becomes the norm and becomes yeah. more and more uh, important to people, which it's just going to keep doing. Yeah. They're going to look stupider and worser and stupider and worser. And they'll have this organizational uh, thing that people can point at and right. just go, look. They're yeah. still doing it. Well, and my guess also would be that um, you would see sort of an ad hoc thing probably start to happen mm. within the Boy Scout community, which is for things like uh, summer camp, uh, you'd probably get all the more conservative troops all saying, hey, let's sign up for these weeks. And you'd have the more liberal <laughs> open troops probably actually not caring so much, but 
also wanting just to avoid the judgment <laughs> of the, the the conservative ones, probably saying, let's all have our sort of our more open and accepting, you know, gathering of troops over during these weeks. Well, I wonder if there's going to ever be an all gay troop. Hey, boys. <laughs> it's Campfire Island. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you look good in shorts. Come on in. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, that's good. That, that's, yeah. Progress happens in little baby steps. Yeah, that's especially that... with that kind of organization. Yeah. That's... And so it's, so it's amazing how comp- the, the two completely different paths that the Boy Scouts took from the Girl Scouts. Not to bring up a whole different issue, but like, Jesus Christ, what's wrong with the Boy Scouts? Yeah. Like, what happened? Well, it's just how I'm actually more baffled like i'm not baffled by what's by the boy scouts i'm baffled by what went so right with the girl scouts (laughs) i guess that's right like that's what confuses me (laughs) what is what is going on there Uh, that's kind of sad you see a (laughs) uh, organization get it right yeah exactly it's confusing yeah it's, it's baffling all right well speaking of uh of organizations and religions uh frank Yes. Why are we so boring? What you and I about? and all of our listeners, so goddamn boring. We are? According, I'm not aware of this. According to Catholic priest uh, <laughs> Father Dwight Longnecker, Longenecker, okay. uh, we are boring. Well, I don't get what you're even talking about. Can you put this in context, please? He, uh, he basically said the following about atheists. I'm sure there are some fascinatingly fun atheists out there, but I have yet to meet one. <laughs> They're all so serious all the time, so unimaginative, so pedantic and literal and dull. I mean, what can be more tiresome than someone who's always rabbiting on about facts and evidence or arguments for the existence of god in comparison consider how very very interesting religion is oh my god he goes on to he literally says uh in religion you have curious little curious things like happy little elephant gods or those holy water bottles with mary and the crown unscrews at the top Oh, it's just a wacky world. Doesn't it sound like fun? You oh ready? They're going to get, uh, he's going to get even more fun. I mean, Hindus have festivals where they fly kites and light lanterns and douse each other with paint. <laughs> they swim naked in the Ganges and say it's something holy. And are they wrong? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Who is, wait, who is this guy? <laughs> Some priest. Oh my God. Uh, he concludes by saying, uh, oh my God. Uh, He says, the Jews have fun, too. They have festivals with lots of good food and laughter and dancing. (laughs) Let's not leave out the Jews. And the guys let their hair grow in those crazy curls on their head. This is fake, Dan. I know it feels fake. Dan, this is fake. (laughs) This is fake. I have every fake meter going off at this point. Did you double check sources? Like, this is for real? Uh, Shh. It's this is <laughs> it's as real as I care to make it be. I didn't I didn't totes double check. Uh I let uh <laughs> I got it off of off of Hemant's blog. Uh, the friendly atheist Hemant probably did a little bit more due diligence. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll trust it. Well, this is insanity, Dan. Uh by the way, uh the Jews also have uh hats, very good hats. And then he says, we have hats, too. Hats with cool names. We have miters and berettas and zucchettos, which means little pumpkin in Italian. And I have a Saturno <laughs> made out of Norwegian beaver. Don't worry, he died a natural death. And one made well, out of straw. Fun. Name one atheist hat, he says. Just one. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> 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 Oh. oh, why'd you have to go into the fact check thing? Who the hell cares? <laughs> it's a it's an answer to our argument that church is always boring. It's not a very effective answer because church is still boring, even with all those fun, fancy yeah, things. That, yeah, like he's basically even those things don't save 
And he's right. Church. They've like, got great hats. They do. They yeah. really have and some amazing full-on costumes. Yeah. Architecture, art, like props. They got s- nutty ass stories. Like shepherds, crooks, and scepters, and all yeah, kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gold and bejeweled, whatever. You go up to the front, and it's like a really good Catholic church. There's like bits of dead body, like yeah. surrounded by ornate framings. Right. And like weird. You know, receptacles and yeah. whatnot. Famous person finger. Yes. All that stuff. Blood that magically once a year turns liquid, and that means that there's not going to be a volcano eruption for the no, entire I, year. I think it mean I think it's something to do with like six more weeks of winter. <laughs> uh, if the, it, wait. Yeah, he's right. There is a lot of crazy. There's a lot and, of really kooky fun accoutrement yeah. uh-huh. surrounding this incredibly boring thing that we do every week. <laughs> And yeah, like wow, well, look at look at look at those nutty Jews and they're growing their hair in the curls and what but that's only fun if you want to do it. Not fun if you have to do it. And it's not like I mean, what what I would like to see is for him to just round up all the fun shit. <laughs> and just do it all. Just do it all. He's got the ringlets with his Yeah, he's strapped his a Zucchetto or and whatever. And he's strapped it was. a box to his forehead and he's got like a <laughs> Thing, yeah, he's doing everything. He's they're hitting each other with the 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 Hindu paints uh-huh. and the, all of it. Yeah, all of it. You want to be fun and crazy? You have to do all the fuck of it, all of the things. Because guess what? He didn't limit himself just to his religion. No, he, he didn't. No, he get, had to like. He, well, yeah, the Hindus. You know the Hindus. Get an elephant in there. They do some crazy shit, and you know the Jews. They do some crazy shit. But you're totally right. Oh yeah, it's just sort of surrounding the, the bullshit. Well, right. get it all together then. That might be fun and interesting. <laughs> it might be, and then everybody has to follow the big hat, take off your clothes, and go and go dip in the Ganges. <laughs> Only don't do that because it's actually it disgusting. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a horrible, horrible river. <laughs> it's like the worst <laughs> thing I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, I mean, yeah, I just I I he's yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, good stuff. Well, if you guys have some good stuff that you need to uh, to talk to us about or tell us about, yeah, uh, write to us. Yeah, you can write to us at podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. or you can leave us a voicemail at four two four six 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 eight four four two. Right, go to the Facebook page, facebook dot com slash tgi atheist, or also on Facebook, you can search for the TGIA members only lounge. Right, and eventually, I will I will yeah. let you in. You have to click to join. And then, yeah. Yeah. And then I scrutinize your page and <laughs> decide your worthiness <laughs> based on whatever arbitrary thing I've come up with Ugh. for that. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. This is uh, Ted Cruz speaking at the, oh, I don't know. Uh, the words I can see on can the wall are research council and men on the wall. Can we call it, can we call the it the, the in the men on the wall? I like yeah. men on the wall. Can we call him uh, uh, presidential hopeful Ted Cruz? <laughs> Oh, it's Watchmen on the Wall. Watchmen on the Wall. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. that sounds not menacing Pre- at all. Presidential hopeful? Yeah. Yeah, he's hoping. He's hoping. Just a few weeks ago, we saw the battles that played out in Indiana and Arkansas. And it was heartbreaking. It was almost a perfect storm. The modern Democratic Party has become so radical, so extreme that they have determined that their devotion to mandatory gay marriage in all 50 states trumps any allegiance to religious liberty under the First Amendment. And let me tell you something that was even sadder. It was just how many Republicans ran for the hills. I'll point out some of the Republicans running in 2016 were nowhere to be found when Indiana was being fought. And I can tell you this, I will always, always, always stand and fight for religious liberty of every American. Always, always, always. For your, our religious liberty? N- no. <laughs> no, no. But yeah. he said always, 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 and he, then he followed it up by every American. Right. I, he meant religious liberty, the liberty to practice a religion. Not the liberty to not. Well, that. but that's not what 
it's about. It's <laughs> always, always, always about that, Frank. In the uh, the battles Ted that are being that are, that are being fought. Oh, what what? How's he polling at the moment? Does anybody know? Have you heard? <laughs> you guys? Anybody? Pipe up uh, if, yeah, you, if you have anything to say. Dan and I don't know. Yeah, anyway. well, I have no idea. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, he's 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 not gonna. He doesn't even have a prayer. No, I know. Oh, I said but prayer, he, and he's all religious. Uh, and stuff. <laughs> See how that works. He uh, he probably has lots of prayers. Yeah, about this. None topic, of them will but, affect. Uh, it. None of them will get him the presidency <laughs> like of the United prayer States in general. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. Um, we had some folks write into us. I will. Uh, I will pull that up now. I suppose. Do to do. There it is. Um, Dear Frank and Dan, writes Mike. Uh, I just wanted to smack the two of you for mentioning the movie God's Not Dead because because so of good. your mention, I decided to watch it. <laughs> no film has ever been more annoying to me. Just as you two did, I yelled at my TV, paused for a break multiple times, and eventually finished it. Oh. This movie has made me so apathetic I can't describe it. Mostly, <laughs> I'm disappointed in Dean Kane and Kevin Sorbo. Oh, love the podcast. Keep up the good work. Blah blah blah. Oh. Uh. Mike, we specifically told you not yeah, to do that. It was clear. We it was were, a do not try this at home moment, and you tried it at home. You cannot be so. angry at us for your folly. <laughs> you were warned, sir. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, we had two people write in. I wanted to read. Uh, we had, well, we had a, n- a number of people write in about this. Uh, Reese uh, wrote in and said, uh, hey, guys, love the show. You were talking about eating slash avoiding red meat due to cholesterol levels. Uh, The Mm. misconceptions about cholesterol are vast. Long story short, dietary cholesterol has no bearing on serum cholesterol, meaning Mm. that in your blood. Right. Uh, Secondly, cholesterol level has a reverse correlation with heart disease, meaning that your heart disease causes cholesterol to spike. Meaning that heart disease causes cholesterol to spike. Oh, okay. The cholesterol actually helps repair the walls of your arteries and veins and is necessary for this purpose. When your insulin levels are high, your LDL cholesterol breaks down and gets uh, pushed to, into the walls of the artery, forming plaques. Uh, but without insulin, it just binds, repairs, and then leaves. Mm, okay. Uh, so that, that's an interesting point. I, are okay. we, I, I actually... Tried to find uh, correlated, corroborating uh, evidence on that. Okay. And it just seems like the internet might not have or might disagree with itself on some point, <laughs> which I think is bizarre. <laughs> anyway, talk to your doctor about, uh, yeah, about the effect of probably, meat on your cholesterol. That's probably the smartest thing to do at this point. Right. Yeah. Um, David had an interesting thing to say also about our, our discussion uh, in terms of... Uh, vegetarianism oh okay uh david said vitamin b12 this is an essential vitamin that we vegans have to supplement to ah, get to get okay. because it is only found in animal products oh it is produced okay. by a bacteria in the guts of herbivores and fish and can't survive in the human gut as such wow. vegans and vegetarians that consume little meat uh have have to carefully supplement or eat artificially fortified foods in order to avoid getting a B12 deficiency and an increased risk of heart disease. Interesting. I often cite this to vegans and vegetarians anytime they declare their diet more natural, healthy, or worse uh, when, they argue the, when they argue we were never made to eat meat. Hmm. For the latter argument, I often like to cite animal behavior research showing how herbivores will eat smaller animals for sustenance when food is scarce. Hmm. And then he referenced a couple of videos that I didn't watch because they were titled things like Deer Eats Mouse and stuff. Oh, God. Like, I, no. I, yeah. I don't need to see that. Mm. No, no, there's no. But he says he is vegan. He's a vegan. He's vegan. So he, okay. He cool. knows what he's talking about yeah. and, he, and, and he believes in the thing, but, yeah. but he's not going to let anybody to get on their high horse about okay. like how it's more natural or healthy right. or whatever also talk to your doctor talk to your doctor if, yeah <laughs> literally be vegan that's fine yeah. uh but do talk to your doctor talk about doctor. uh what that means yeah. for your health yeah um because it's horrible for you <laughs> it is absolutely the worst thing you can <laughs> anyway um oh god let's see here what else do i have uh yeah, I this one I figured I needed to read because it hit home for Franklin here. Uh, no, hey, guys, okay. I'm writing you this email because I just finished your most recent episode in which you spoke of the Christian tracts that look like ID or credit cards. Ugh. 
I worked as a server in a casual dining restaurant. Oh, Charlie's. Oh, did you? Uh, and I can tell you that there were also uh, Christian tracts that resembled five or ten dollar bills. How do oh, I know I've this? Seen those. Uh, well, because dickbag Christians would often leave me these instead mm-hmm. of a tip. Yep. I have grown up in the restaurant industry, and I know my service was stellar, so I can't comprehend why they would choose to stiff me and let me know the the, the good news of Jesus at the same time. Oh, they weren't stiffing you. They were, oh, they were giving you a greater eternal gift. life. <laughs> what a what an amazing tip. Yeah, honestly, what's amazing to me is like they're just getting out of it. They're not, they're just being bullshit because if their if their server they don't know if their server was Christian. Their uh, server oh, could no, they be can tell Dan. Their server could be way more Christian than them and don't need a fucking tract. What they need is to get paid. No, that you see, Dan, they didn't feel judged. And that's how they know. Oh, that's how they know. That, that, your, that their server was not Christian. Right. If their server had been Christian, they would have felt that that mutual judgment mm. taking place. Right. And uh, they, would have, they would have gotten into the tacit holier-than-thou eye battle. Absolutely. And then, uh, then the, they would know. It's the, yeah, the, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, lastly, I wanted to read this from uh, Isai, uh, who is from Mexico. Ah. Uh, he, he, uh, let's see. First, I want to say, I love the podcast, uh, blah, blah, blah. It's, uh, I get uncomfortable reading people flattering us. He did say this. Uh, he said that he loves Mexico in part because, uh, they have the most beautiful people in the world. And then in parentheses, he says, sorry, Frank, but Dan's beard is sexy as hell. So he's exempt from this statement. Oh, I'm okay. sexy. Your beard is. Oh, that's true. <laughs> He hasn't he hasn't seen my beach body. <laughs> anyway, uh he says US atheists complain about being attacked by religious people, but rarely does it get dangerous. Yeah, maybe you, you get punched in extreme cases, but you won't die. Imagine getting to the rural places of Mexico and those people for some reason know you're an atheist. If you, you can bet th- that your life might be in danger. He says uh these people generally are not educated, and they have, haven't c- gotten out of their town for their whole lives. They think that your non-belief is dangerous for them. A friend of my professor almost got killed with a machete, kind of like the news that, that you discussed a, a weeks ago. Fortunately, uh, he, he got out because my professor had his pickup nearby. They knew he was an atheist because he didn't want to thank God for the food. He didn't do anything disrespectful. He just kept quiet during the praying, not doing anything. This, these, these cases are not common. Uh, they're, as I say, an extreme case. But at the same time, it happens more than you think. Ooh. Yeah. So uh, That's scary. Frightening stuff yeah. happening south of the border. That's, uh, that's, that's less fun than, you know, a nice day on the beach in in you know cabo san lucas yeah i was i all i could think of was puerto vallarta and i thought you know what the beach that i went to there wasn't that great <laughs> so i was trying to get to the how, how caribbean did you feel side as an atheist though on a touristy beach were you did you feel okay so i'm feeling that's not really the real mexico right you know? yeah yeah touristy so. beach you're you're probably safe <laughs> Just don't don't go spreading spreading it around oh, God. yeah that is uh that is scary it's terrifying it's a very religious country yeah anyway uh so we uh so moving on here's what we were going to talk about yeah uh inspired uh, as we are by the community that is the TGIA members only lounge absolutely um uh, we decided that we wanted to chat about uh something that has been sort of a constant thing that i have to deal with as i as i sort of moderate the the lounge which yeah, is okay. that Unlike so many other parts of the the World Wide Web, the Mm -hmm. intertubes, Mm -hmm. as they are called, Mm -hmm. I insist on people being incredibly civil to each other. Ah, yes. Uh, It's a rule that I have Uh uh, Uh in the Members Only Lounge, and it's the one thing that if you run afoul of it, you you risk actually being kicked out. Yeah, I I believe it. You're a strict disciplinarian. (laughs) Yeah, I am a firm... Draconian, in fact. Just walking into this house, it's... (laughs) You can feel the the tension. <laughs> yeah. You must be respectful, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> family. Um, in the in in the description for the uh, for the group, I do say that um, 
all conversation is welcome, but abuse is not. The right. People must be people must be shown respect, but ideas are fair game. Right. The, so the, that's, that's my guiding wonderful star. distinction. Yeah. Uh, and it's been tricky mm-hmm. getting people to understand where I'm coming from with that. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of, and you know, there are, I'm I'm a member of several uh, atheist groups, and a lot of them are make none of those kinds of uh, uh, of rules, uh-huh. which is fine. Uh, you know, different places have different rules and should, but I I get so upset by how people treat each other uh-huh. that I just uh, you know I this corner I just decided it had to be respectful in this way. Well, and we were talking before we started recording, uh, sort of about how. I, I think people I, I, actually I'm going to spin what we talked about a little bit. OK, um, I think people have a difficult time with civil speech because it is not modeled for them at all in our political and just public discourse in this country. It, we've kind of lost. We've, we've track completely of it. lost the ability to speak to each other civilly. And so in in the place of civil discourse uh we just have a a constant barrage of ad hominem attacks right or constant or or all you do is just attack the person right instead of the idea or the argument in part because that's more entertaining and so and so like places like fox news and on the flip side msnbc Uh constantly participate in this because they get better ratings if they do it yeah uh but but what it does is model for society a a a a, an adversarial, a, mm-hmm. a decidedly adversarial way of looking at the whole world, right? Uh, which I think is a sickness. Yeah. To, to my mind, uh, this kind of this kind of adversarial uh, way of of approaching the universe and approaching your fellow uh-huh. human is it it hurts you. Yeah. I don't think people understand that. Like, you can get to the same place, you can arrive at the same place in two different ways. But the journey uh-huh. uh, will have an effect on you right. as you do it. Well, and because of this, because of this cultural sickness, we have a sick and an ailing uh, national government. Yeah, you know. Yeah, where where the, you know you've got Republicans who can't who because how the, of how they've set their own platform up can't acknowledge yeah. when the other side has done something well uh-huh. and can't even like join them when they agree with them yeah because they are defined by their uh by their being against them yeah they're not defined by their own opinions they're defined by whom they are against yeah, yeah. so uh, one of and the it, things that yeah. that brought that came to mind as we were as we were exploring this idea because i don't think i'm i'm necessarily I I'm not a professional psychologist or whatever. These no, are sort of no, no, my no. Obser- my observations from my own life. And people who I believe are smart and that I respect uh-huh. disagree with me. And one of the one of the people who did that, uh, I was listening to uh to The Scathing Atheist, which is a uh, another hmm. podcast uh-huh. uh just a few weeks ago. And um Noah on The Scathing Atheist had a diatribe. He does a diatribe every every episode. Right. And part of it he he was discussing his view on this. So I wanted to play a little bit of that and just uh, just give a sense of, of what he had to say. Okay. They're taught that they could be burned in hell for eternity just for pursuing the question of what was up God's ass during the whole Tower of Babel thing. So how do you counteract that upbringing? With respect? By reinforcing the notion that these ideas are respectable? Think about it like a seesaw. Since this person was born into a religious family, all the weight has been put on the reverence end. So now we're supposed to stand somewhere in the middle and think we're going to move anything? Hell no. We need to be as far out on the other end of the scale as possible. We should be treating with exactly as much mockery as they're giving at solemnity. We need to counteract reverence with irreverence. That's how it worked for me. I was raised in a nominally religious household, and even the non-religious influences early in my life still threw a bone to faith. You know, it wasn't until I started reading Douglas Adams and watching Monty Python that I was able to put religious belief in its proper context. I needed to see somebody mock it before I felt like I had intellectual permission to even question it. Now, if you disagree with me and you think there's some intellectual justification in not labeling a stupid idea as stupid, feel free to reach out. 
You know, feel free to tell me what you think, but don't pretend that you're on the intellectual high ground here, and don't be surprised when I dismiss your objection. You're asking me to respect racism, misogyny, and anti-scientific fairy tales. That in itself is a stupid idea, and you already knew how much respect I had for stupid ideas when you sent the email. I think – so when he when – when I first heard that, uh, I – my response was very uh, – I, I I didn't know where I was putting myself. Actually, I like right. really had to sort of explore right. why I was reacting so negatively to what he said because he's right. Uh, what we're talking about is stupid ideas. Yeah. Um. But my what what I've realized now is that he's talking also about mockery. Right. And mockery is very different than being okay to label something uh, an idea uh, a poor idea. Right. 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 Or, or or to try to prove that idea wrong. Right. And I yeah. and I think that the distinction to be made and the distinction that he fails to make, and I think that this is a failure on his part, mm-hmm. is that it is fine to denigrate ideas. Mm-hmm. And it is absolutely uh and it and it's important to say that bad ideas are bad. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's not fine to denigrate people. Yeah. It's just not. And mockery does just that. Yeah. Mockery is not saying your idea is stupid. Mockery is saying you're stupid for believing your idea, and yeah. there's a very big difference between yeah. those two things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, well, he uses this example of the, of the seesaw, right, mm. and trying to move the person who's on the other side of the seesaw, and he figures that if you just counterweight that person with something as extreme as what they're saying, right, right. Then, then that's then, how and, you and move with the seesaw. In, in civility, right, that's how you move it. But the fact of the matter is the person who's all the way out on the end of the other, I mean, just to use his metaphor, the person who's all the way at the other end of the seesaw from you, right? Right. Isn't going to hear you. They're, I think it's a bad analogy. I think right? so too. Because the people who are in the middle of, of, of who are willing to have discourse, those are the people who you can potentially sway. Well, maybe it's not the people who are entrenched in their bad ideas. Right. Just telling them they have bad ideas further entrenches them in their ideas. That's right. Just, that's just psychology. Well, no, he pointed know? out. He points out that he that for him when he was a believer. Now he was never a, a devout believer, but right. when he was a believer, it was hearing people mock right. uh, his beliefs that made him think about it. And I've right. heard that from multiple people. Yeah. So I'm not going to discount so the, that the at all. Planting of of the seed of of doubt and whatnot. But then he but then he talks about Monty Python. He talks about humor, and yeah. humor is not mockery. Yeah, that's yeah. humor is satire. Satire right. is not the same thing as mockery exactly. at all. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, and and so and so I think that that distinction is really important to yeah. make. And the other thing that I here so he, so I, I'm going to go to the 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 seesaw uh, metaphor and say that on on, an, on a one on one basis mm-hmm. two people when we're talking about two people it's absolutely 100% vital that everybody's respectful to each other yeah yeah you absolutely cannot make any headway with another human being if you're disrespectful to that person exactly you can you can respectfully disagree with them and might make some headway but you will absolutely never make headway one on one but uh just just uh mocking them right I want to make create the image of a larger seesaw with millions of people on it. <laughs> Most of the people are going to be towards the middle of uh-huh. that seesaw. Exactly. And if you want the seesaw to move one way or another, what you need to do is not go to the ends and start screaming, but rather go to the middle and start talking. And have a civil discourse. Yeah. And eventually, the best ideas uh-huh. will start to win. Right. And it will move the middle toward one side or the other. Right. And that's what's going to tip the seesaw. And you, we, we the, actually, the grander, the yeah. larger seesaw. And we actually saw a really good example of that in this last legislative session in all places, Utah. In Utah, that's right. Where, where the discussion was being made about extending uh, housing rights yeah. and employment rights to and protections to the LGBT community. Correct. It was actually the LGBT community. They did the whole thing. They There's trans protections, the whole works. Right. Uh, and in order to make that happen, the representatives of the LGBT community had to sit down with legislators and also because it is utah members of the you know higher ranks of the L- of the lds church that's right and they were able to have a conversation and they were actually able to find some common ground and figure out well what are we comfortable with with you guys getting and what 
basically because it's politics what can we get in return right and they and everybody ended up being very good about what happened this is very different than years past where there was a lot of kicking and screaming right. and and, and and yelling about these issues. And you need those years of yelling. I'm not going to say that those years of yelling did not didn't do anything. Right. They I think they prepped the situation entirely. Sure. Um they got they got the gay community noticed. They, you know, but so forth and so on. But nonetheless, what ended up actually winning the day was the civil discourse. Right. And what you ended up seeing was a very, very different outcome from other legislatures who were who were who were dealing with similar issues in this uh, previous le- state legislative sessions. Right. My know? my image, uh, you know, again with this the seesaw image. When someone goes running to the end of the seesaw, meaning screaming and yelling about how stupid the other person is. Yeah. Guess what that other person does? They go running to their end of the seesaw. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's n- so like. Literally, uh, that's fine. You can stay on your ends of the seesaw and scream and yell, but it's not going to tip one way or the other. What's yeah. going to happen, What's the only thing that's going to tip it is when both people are lured to the middle yeah. for discourse. Yeah. And what changed things, I think, uh, what, and what tends to change things for human beings is, isn't my, my way is right and your way is wrong, right. but rather, look at me right now. Yeah. I'm a human being. Absolutely. And, yeah. I, and, and you're not honoring that, right. and it's hurting me. Yeah. And if you can be honest and open yourself up at, to that kind of vulner- vulnerability mm-hmm. and look someone right in the eye and say, what you're saying hurts me. Right. That's gonna, it may not have an effect every time, no. but that has a, that's way more powerful than yelling. Well, you're being honest. Yeah, and, and human. Yeah, and you're giving them something to connect to, and like you said, vulnerable. Yeah, you know, it's a powerful tool. Vulnerability. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, you can agree or disagree with us. I'm I'm open yeah. to it. I would love to hear what you guys have to say on on the matter. Uh, for the time being, uh, for the foreseeable future, the TGIA Lounge will remain a civil place. <laughs> uh, Good. Good as it should be. Uh, there, uh, yeah, I am absolutely. N- believe me, there. The only thing that will really guaranteed get you kicked out is if you insist on uh, being uncivil to other people. Yeah. If you if you don't like what they have to say, mm-hmm. you have to come up with a way of dis- disagreeing with them that isn't about attacking them. Right. Because you've lost the argument. Yeah. You make an ad hominem attack. Guess what? You're using a fallacy anyway. Yeah. You're already making a worse argument. Right. Exactly. So I am forcing you to make. A good argument. Right. Or at least a better one than an at home and M attack. <laughs> and everybody can be nice to each other and friendly. Uh-huh. That's nice. Yay. It's a, just a nicer environment. Kumbaya, <laughs> my lord. Yeah, my lord. Kumbaya. Anyway, uh, that's... <laughs> I, I've, I, I, I... Hopefully this discussion will continue. This this discussion can, will it continue. It needs to continue. Uh, with us. I, I hope that you guys engage us. I, Call us. Yeah. Uh, or write to us. Uh, you can write to us at podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you can leave us a voicemail message, which we love when you do. Uh, that's 424-666-8442. Uh, yes, go to the Facebook page. Uh, the page is facebook.com slash TGI Atheist. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's a great place. Mackenzie does an awesome job of, of giving you really cool stuff there. Right. Or you can find the Members Only Lounge at TG. No, search for on facebook the tgia members only lounge and uh, request to join yeah uh and 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 then you can be a part of this conversation we, frank and i are kind of looking to the members only lounge as a possible uh feeder place for our discussions at the end of every show yeah we're, we're thinking maybe that would be a, a good idea so yeah. we'll see how that works out but in the meantime please uh please join the discussion there it's a great group of people yeah and uh, and 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 be respectful. Yeah. And also, if uh, you're somebody who donates uh, on uh, Joyride or on PayPal at a level um, where you, you you get the monthly Google Hangout, we're going to be doing that this week. So look for an email. Yeah. About that. Nice. Uh, thanks to Mackenzie for do- all her hard work. We saw her just last night. Uh, yeah. That was she's, fun. She was in town. Yeah. Uh, she's normal. She she lives very far from us, but she does some, some great work on the Facebook page. Yeah. So thank. You. And thank you to the Red Rock Hot Club for letting us use your music. And uh, thank you, kind and dear listener, for uh, listening to us blather on (laughs) yet another week. We sure do appreciate you. Bye-bye.